I have a linear system here. Um, actually, it's not linear. It's nonlinear now. Uh, that means that we have uh, x squared terms and xy terms and y squared terms. Um, anything that isn't x by itself or y by itself is called a nonlinear term. When you have nonlinear terms, uh, the system of equations becomes much more difficult to study. So, we're going to study it with the following steps. We're going to first identify equilibrium points, sort of like we did with the predator-prey problem, um, where we found two equilibrium points in that problem, you'll recall. Uh, next, we're going to draw what's called a phase portrait. Um, basically, that means we're going to use software such as P-Plane to draw a picture of what our solutions look like. And then we're going to use a, a mathematical tool called linearization in order to study the equilibrium points. And uh, by solving the linearizations, we'll be able to uh, make some interesting deductions about our system of equations. So let's get into that analysis now. First we're going to identify the equilibrium points. So that just means that we need uh, both of these equations to be zero uh, because recall that um, recall that in order to be an equilibrium point x and y need to not be moving and for x and y to not be moving that would mean that their derivatives are both zero with respect to time uh, which means that uh, x prime should be zero and y prime should be zero hence uh, our equilibrium points will be in places where this occurs uh, using Mathematica to solve, and I've omitted the code, but I would have used the nSolve function, of course. Or actually, I, uh, better yet, I would have probably just used the solve function, uh, and that would have that would have done it. Uh, I just would have told it to solve these equations for x and y, and it gives uh, four solutions, these four points. Uh, next, we're going to draw a phase portrait with software. So let's do that. And uh, this is again using p-plane, uh, which is, um, uh, I think I still need to put that link in the description, but uh, using the p-plane software that I've linked to on my website and hopefully on this video if I remember, uh, you can generate this uh, you can generate this picture pretty quickly. And so that's what solutions to this system of equations look like uh, for various initial values. And finally, we're going to linearize our system, uh, our system of equations about each equilibrium point. So as you can see, there are four equilibrium points as listed here negative 2, 0, negative 1, 1, uh, 1, negative 1, and 2, 0. So the origin's here, of course, um, but I haven't drawn the axes. Um, those are the four equilibrium points. We're going to do what's called linearization now. Now, how does that work exactly? Uh, well, first of all, I, uh, I cleaned up the diagram a little bit. There were It was kind of cluttered. So... Um, I just drew these black arrows by hand to sort of indicate what broadly is happening uh, on this phase plane. Uh, so we're going to study this red point, negative 1, 1. Now that's an equilibrium point. And uh, we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on it. And uh, now look what happens. Uh, so here's uh, that a picture of what we had right here all blown up. So we're, this is a much closer scale now, uh, and uh, I've drawn a few solutions nearby so you can see what those look like. 
So now, um, it turns out that if you want to study uh, if you want to study the system of, of equations near the equilibrium point, you can draw a new set of coordinate axes, label them u and v, and uh, these equations near this equilibrium point are approximately equal to a uh, set of linear equations in u and v. Now I'm going to discuss later how I came up with these approximations. So you're not supposed to know how I got these just yet. But suffice it to say that near this point, negative uh, 1, 1, in the original plane that we had over here, and in this coordinate system, uv, the differential equation is approximately given by these equations. Just take my word for it for now. So uh, if we know this, then, well, we're very happy because we can solve these equations, they're linear. So we go ahead and solve. Uh, we, we're solving for, um, this is a system of equations in U and V, so um, in matrix form it, this, it's this. And to solve a linear system we always guess that our solution will have the form e to the lambda t times an eigenvector, which I'm now calling W because u is actually being used for the variable now. Uh, sorry if that notation is a bit confusing because uh, usually we were calling this our eigenvector but now u is actually a function of time and w is the eigenvector. So the eigenvalues are uh, this negative number and this number turns out to be positive positive. and uh, they yield these two eigenvectors w1 w2 and combined, they give two solutions, uh, which are these, e to the lambda t uh, w1 plus e to the lambda, lambda t w2, where this eigenvalue goes here, this eigenvalue goes here, this eigenvector goes here, this eigenvector goes here. Uh, so those are our solutions. And uh, in decimal form, uh, this is what those are. And you can see that they are, um, so solutions shrink along this vector and grow along this vector, so it's a uh, saddle, it's a saddle node. Uh, solutions will go in along, along this vector, negative 6.46, 1.0, and solutions leave along the green vector, which is this guy. Now look at this. Uh, what we just did is, um, is we figured out what our uh, what our system of equations do close to this point. So uh, this solution is valid or roughly valid um, in the coordinate system the uv set up near this uh, near this equilibrium point. So it's clearly not valid for all uh, for any initial conditions, but the idea is that if you choose an initial condition very close to this equilibrium point, the solution will be very roughly given by, uh, by this. So this linearization gave us the local behavior of, uh, of our system. And you can see that it is indeed a saddle point. Uh, it's, it looks just like a saddle point if you zoom in. So uh, we've identified this as a, an unstable saddle node right here. Now let's do the same thing for another equilibrium point to give you the idea. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and study this point right here, 2, 0. But before we do that, before we do that, uh, we need a formula. Uh, for how, so how do we how do we linearize a nonlinear system near an equilibrium point? Uh, we use this formula. So if you have uh, if you have an equilibrium point, which I'm going to refer to as x naught y naught, and in this case that's two and zero for x naught and y naught. Uh, so if you have an equilibrium point and you want to linearize your system about that point, so if you have 
if you have a system of the form x prime equals f of x, where f is a not necessarily linear function of x, then in local coordinates where you you let u equal x minus x naught, v equals y minus y naught, uh, in, in these local coordinates, uh, the linearization has the following uh, is given by the following equation u u prime equals df at x naught times u. Uh, df at x naught is called the Jacobian matrix. Uh, it's given by uh, taking partial derivatives of uh, the first component of f uh, and the second component of f with respect to x and y. Uh, the best way to understand this is just to look at an example. So let's do that now. So in this case, uh, our equations are uh, um, x prime equals f of x, where uh, this is uh, the first component of f, and this is the second component of f. So that's what this is. And then uh, uh, we know that our linearization is going to have this form, but we need to find this matrix. So df of, at x naught is this matrix of partial derivatives evaluated at uh, the point 2 comma 0, which is our equilibrium point. And uh, recalling that uh, this, this thing here is f1 and this thing here is f2. These are the two components of the bold-faced letter F. Those are what we're going to take the partial derivatives of. So I put those in here. So we take the partial derivative with respect to x of this, partial with respect to y, and then we take the partial with respect to x of f2, which is this, and the partial with respect to y of f2, which is this. When you do those partial derivatives, um, taking a partial derivative, of course, just means you take the derivative with respect to the specified variable. So here we're taking the derivative with respect to x, so we get 2x minus 3y. And whereas when we take the same derivative, or when we take the derivative with respect to y of the same thing, you get just negative 3x, because that's the derivative with respect to y. Similarly for these, so you end up with this matrix, which you then, which you then evaluate at 2 comma 0, meaning you put 2 in for x, 0 in for y, and you end up with this matrix. So this is the linearization of our system at 2 comma 0. And so u prime equals 4, 0, negative 6, 2 times u. That is the linearization uh, given by this formula. So the linearization of your nonlinear system is given by just finding the Jacobian of your um, the Jacobian matrix of your function f. Here's how you do it. And you end up with a matrix with numbers. So we're studying this equilibrium point and we just found the equal the uh, we just found the linearization for it at that point. Uh, we're going to solve the linearization now so uh, of course, we're going to assume, as always, that our solution will be of the form e to the lambda t times a vector, w. And uh, we just need to find the eigenvalues. Here they are. And the eigenvectors. Here they are. And then our solution is this, uh, which, is, uh, which gives us this, um, this picture, where the green is um, the vector 3, 1, and purple is the vector 1, 0. So the solutions uh, depart the origin along the green line, but then veer off and move in the direction of the purple line, because 4 is the dominant eigenvalue over 2. So therefore, this vector, the purple vector, dominates over the green vector in the long term. So solutions veer off along the purple vector. Uh, but that's only uh, a local picture, so we put that into our global picture, and we see that locally that's what, what is happening. 
and that is an unstable node. The solutions are veering away from as opposed to going toward that node. And I leave you to try on your own the uh, point negative two zero and what was the other one? Uh, one negative one. Those are two more equilibrium points that we have not uh, done on this presentation. And you can try them on your own if you want to get your hands dirty. So the um, interesting point with all this is that uh, all this analysis doesn't ever require us to solve any differential equations except for linear differential equations. And then everything else is just uh, linearization, uh, doing local linearizations. So um, it's often the case that these uh, systems of equations are intractable. Uh, to, when it comes to trying to find exact solutions. Uh, so the most we can really ever do is uh, figure out the properties of their solutions by studying equilibrium points like we've just done. Which is why Morpheus tells us that when we really understand differential equations, we don't have to solve them. 